Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and X-Men Blue, issue number 20. A whole lot of blue happening this week, right? We got the X-Men annual out at the same time. Anyway, this particular one ends the cross time capers, and it was a pretty good ending. All right, I'm usually not too fond of the way that a lot of these storylines are ending, but this one was pretty satisfying. So I was right, and I'm very, very happy that I was. This was not a negative prediction that the X-Men, when they left time and they came back and they saw that there were already X-Men there, this was actually these version of the X-Men with Professor X number two, the future version of his son. Um, we, we get, you know, Deadpool and, and Zorn and all these other knuckleheads out there who are just basically replacing the X-Men. Cute. Cute. So that's why they thought that there were already X-Men there. I love that they did that. Maybe because of the, the big Fox and, and Disney merger. Now maybe that's why they're undoing that. <laughs> like, no, 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 that didn't happen. So eventually they could fix time, but they, uh, according to Professor X, who they resurrect, well, resurrect, they resuscitate basically and bring him back to the, the world of the living and have this conversation with him. It's like, oh, my X-Men, I knew you were still alive. So that was actually really cool. I did dig that. Um, I'm also okay with the really weird little mental suggestion throughout the history of time to finally get to the X-Men where Magneto builds the time platform and all that stuff, which he, of course, eventually forgets. And only all of these X-Men, who are all time-displaced, dimension-displaced, and all that stuff, will remember what's going on. But somebody else who remembers back in the day is actually Magneto. So when the the new version of the fake X Men show up uh, to Magneto and they're like, hey, you know, in the past and like, hey man, check it out, you could join us. You know, I know we just tried to kill you, but you know, put that to the side. Nah, Magneto's apparently about to kill them. And uh, yeah, yeah, more power to him. All right, I I'm very excited to see. Uh, a Magneto who is just tearing through everybody again. Look, not that he's been wimpified or anything like that. Just, you know, when, when Magneto's trying to be a good guy, he's not unleashing his full power. He's got to be a bad guy for him to usually just let loose and just, you know, tear through people. So this was cool. Even just the, uh, the insinuation that he was about to kill these guys. That was actually pretty cool. I'm digging that. So this was a good comic book. I'm going to give this an A-. minus. This was fun. Uh, we got to see, like I said, a good wrap up to a story that was otherwise a little bit <laughs> fruity, but I'm okay with it because, you know, if it ends good, then it is good. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> so um, also a little bit nostalgic because they brought all those time caper uh, uh, victims, whatever that, that were there, the Generation X and the, and the X-Men 2099 and brought them all, all in for a big smorgasbord beatdown on this uh, future fake version of the X-Men. This was, uh, this was, I didn't like that they escaped the way they did. Just like Scott had said, it's like it never happened. Yeah, exactly. That's annoying. But again, if Magneto did actually off these guys uh, in the past, hence future, then that actually kind of makes up for it. <laughs> so anyway, this was good. This was good. So Professor Bill, Comic Book University, class dismissed.